In this video, we have a new power station from All Powers. So this is the new R1500. It's lithium iron phosphate, has 1,152 watt hours of battery capacity. It weighs 36 pounds. We have a 15 amp AC charging capability. We've got 650 watt max solar charging and we've got an 1800 watt AC inverter output. Let's open it up. All right, here's our All Powers accessory pack. There's our solar cable, and we have an AC charging cable, manual and warranty card. And here's the power station. We've got two USB-A outputs. We got two USB-C outputs at 100 watt. One, two, three and four AC output receptacles. They look like uh, 20 amp. And uh, we've got our DC cigarette lighter jack, our screen. Oh, look, we got wireless charging, 15 watts. So there's two of those here. On the side, we've got our AC charging input. We got a resettable fuse and we've got our solar and DC charging inputs. The solar input can handle 12 to 60 volts. And on the other side, we have expansion battery ports. Looks like we've got two. Yep, absolutely, we've got two expansion battery ports. That's really neat. I didn't know this model had expansion batteries. Well, let's see if we can power the unit on. And there it is, it arrived to us at 73% state of charge. Let's plug our AC charging cord in and see how fast we can charge. Okay, now we're registering some power coming in. I think I saw it peak out at slightly over 900 watts just a second ago, but now we're kind of tapering down to around 800. So now that we're getting closer to 90%, we're seeing this power actually taper off even more. Okay, I want to try connecting with their app, uh, but the Bluetooth is not on by default from the factory on this unit. The manual says that we have to hold the DC button for three seconds. Okay, there it is. Now I see the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi icon. Let's see if we can find it. Now. Oh, there it is. We found it. And there we go. I absolutely hate this login thing that that some of these apps force you to do. Okay, so on their app here, so I was going to log in with Google. And it says, please read and agree to the privacy policy. And I'm like, okay, where is that? And finally, I'm looking down here in, in small micro text. There's this. <clears throat> so you can read all this. And I'm trying to find out where the agree button is, but I can't see it. And I'm looking all over the place, and it turns out it's this little bitty tiny dot right here. There, I check marked it to where I agree. That's not very intuitive. Yeah, there we go. Now we're back. And uh, okay, so it wouldn't allow me to go to this page if I wasn't logged in. So real quick. Power station people, app people, if you're listening, we don't like logging in, okay? There's no reason for us to give personal information for us to use our devices. You guys really need to consider that. Okay, back to the review. So we're at the standard mode, fast mode. I'm not sure what eco mode is. Maybe that's where the inverter can shut down after a period of time. We got one, two, four, and six hours. So let's try to plug in a load as we're charging to make sure that works. We'll plug in this heater. And we need to turn the AC output on. There it is. Yep, so we can charge and use the AC output at the same time. So the heater's on low. Let's do medium. We're at uh, 1,058 watts. 
Let's crank it up to high. All right, we're at 1,392 watts. We need to find something else to plug in here. All right, let's plug this heat gun in. Now check it out, we're at 1,846 watts. Oh, we shut down. Yeah, we were definitely pushing over the 1,800 watt limit, so that's expected. Okay, so we're back on. Let's turn the heater on medium and try the heat gun now. All right, so that gets us at 1555. I think I've got something else we can plug in. Let's try this fan. Can we try low first? Probably, right? Uh-oh. We shut down again, and I didn't even see it go over 1,800 watts. All right, I'm curious now if we disconnect AC. What happens? So I've got the heater on. I've got the heat gun on. The AC's unplugged. We're going to plug the fan in. Okay, fan's on low. We're doing 1,500 watts out. That's kind of weird because it seemed like it was doing more watts out when we had the AC plugged in. Okay, AC's in again. Oh, look. What? <laughs> it was running the heater, the heat gun, and the fan just fine. And then I plugged in the AC charging, and <laughs> we went up to a higher wattage output, and then it shut down. Let's start this again. We got the AC charger disconnected. We got the heater, the heat gun, and the fan back on, and we're running, and everything seems fine. Okay, the fan's on high. Yeah, now it totally will run these loads without shutting down. It seems to be a limitation if you've got the AC input on and you're running loads. All right, so now I'm curious of how, if we can do the heater on high, I'm going to do the heat gun on. Okay, we're doing almost 1,700 watts. We're still running fine. No problem. Let's turn, let's turn the fan on. We're exceeding the 1,800 watts now. Okay, we're right about at 1,800 watts. 1,803. Yeah, it's running this stuff fine, and we're at the maximum wattage. Yeah, so if you got the AC input plugged in, you can't get as much wattage out of this unit. It's been running for a little while here just fine. So it can handle its maximum rated output just fine, just not with the <laughs> AC input connected. I'm thinking you're limited to like, I don't know, 1,500 watts or something like that we've seen. All right, guys, so I had to think about this for a minute, and this is actually the proper behavior. Because if you remember when I said listen for that click, when you plug in the AC cord, it actually switches over in a UPS mode to running the loads directly off AC, and then it stops running the loads off the power station. So there's a transfer switch built in. And the reason why it limits to about 1,500 watts is because you should only be pulling 1,500 watts through the AC power cord. So basically you're plugging into a 1500 watt AC receptacle. So that's for safety and that is the way that it should be. So there's nothing wrong with the unit and it even states it here in the manual. Uh, it says the UPS, the maximum power of the AC output port should not exceed 1500 watts. So basically it will protect if, if you're going over 1500 watts 
when you've got the grid plugged in here. So there you go, that's the way it should be. You just gotta know that if you're going to use it in this UPS mode where you've got the grid plugged in and you're trying to power your, your devices, you are then limited to about 1500 watts total. All right, so let's move on. While I was in the app, I turned the fast charging on and check it out, we are charging at 1500 watts uh, through AC. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, I'm totally liking that. It seems like all the power stations these days are coming out with that fast charging feature, and that's really awesome. All right, so let's move on to charging this thing with solar. All right, so I've got two Bougier V 200 watt panels wired in series, and then I've got one, I don't know what kind of panel this is, but it should put out the same voltage as these two wired in series, so that's paralleled in. So you have 400 watts, 370 or something a little less than 800 watts of solar there and i just measured the voltage open circuit here and it was about 39 40 volts so we're in a safe range and let's plug it in to our power station here there we go there it is just woke up I hope you can see this without any glares. I think, nah, I bet you do have glares. Maybe you can see it there. So we're slowly climbing. Over 400 watts now. Ah, it looks like we're kind of maxing out at 455. Yeah, we need to see what kind of current we're pulling through here because a lot of these solar power stations, you know, they're limited on the current of what you could put in here. And that ends up limiting the solar input because, you know, you can't get it. It's, it's really hard to try to get it at the actual 60 volt max because solar panels just don't come in every po uh, possible voltage configuration. <laughs> so let's see what kind of current we're pulling because we could be bumping up against the maximum. Yeah, so we're, we're hitting the maximum 13 amp input. That's the problem. So that's as much as we're gonna get unless we can get the voltage of the PV up. And really, <laughs> You're not going to be able to do it, I don't think, because, you know, if you were to add another panel in series, you're going to go over the maximum voltage. Again, that's the dilemma with the way that they do these power stations. You know, these guys would have to basically build a specialized solar panel with the exact right number of cells in it that would allow you to get close to that 60 volt max so you could get you know a higher wattage i think realistically this is about the max the 450 ish watts on solar charging which for a power station of this size that's not terrible that's actually pretty decent yeah, and here's the app showing our 450 watts coming in through the solar all right, so we got the fan plugged back in. I want to check the sine wave here with the oscilloscope. Yep, and we got a pure sine wave. All right, so we're fully charged up to 100%. And now we're going to do a usable capacity test. We're going to do it through the cigarette lighter jack. And as always, there's some conversion circuitry behind this. So I don't expect it to be 100% efficient, uh, but we'll run the test and see what kind of usable capacity we get. We're gonna do the test at eight amps. We need to turn the DC output on. Okay, there we go. Now we're seeing 12.5 volts. So let's start the test. We're pulling 94.3 watts. 
we'll just let that run and we'll come back and see what we get. All right, the capacity test is completed and we have 959.5 usable watt hours. And that gives us 83.289% of the total capacity. And lastly, let's charge up some devices. So we're gonna plug my laptop into the USB-C port. There we go, and it says we are charging. And we're showing 20, 22 watts. I think it's going up. There we go, let's get rid of that glare. Yeah, it's going up there. And then let's also plug in my tablet. And we're also charging as well. All right, so we're gonna plug my phone into the other USB-C output. All right, there we got turbo power. And we're charging everything, everything at about 42 watts. Yeah, so there we go. We're charging my laptop, my phone, and my tablet. Uh, that all seems to be working pretty good. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be the end of the video. As always, let me know what you think about this unit, and I'll catch you in the next one.